Great conference, as, as always. Uh, really appreciate everyone uh, coming. I am uh, Paul Farquharson with uh, eCobalt. See if we can figure this out here. Essential power, infinite possibilities. Our uh, um, time frame here is pretty short, so I will try and flip through here as fast as, as I possibly can so we have a little bit of time at the end for some, uh, some questions. Uh, once again, our disclaimer, there might be some risk in a mining project. This, this statement here, I think, is, is critical for us to look at and pay attention to because we are committed to providing ethically produced, environmentally sound, battery-grade cobalt salts, essential for the rapidly growing rechargeable battery and renewable energy sectors made safely, responsibly, and transparently in the United States. We are the only company in the world, I believe, that can make that statement. Uh, just a little bit about us, uh, I'm President and CEO, Mark Tran, our CFO, has uh, operational experience, uh, Rick Hansinger, Senior VP Technical, and Monty Sutton, you'll see this afternoon, our Manager of Corporate Development, he'll be on some of the panels this afternoon. We are uh, cashed pretty good, we did a uh, bought deal with uh, Canaccord and 8 Capital, in, uh, announced it uh, February 16th, closed it February 28th, so we have about $20 million in the bank right now, which is really uh, giving us some, some power and clout with a balance sheet like this to be able to attract some very good talent. Uh, we're, we're on the hunt here for a Chief Operating Officer um, as we move forward. So the cobalt and the, and the cobalt demand, it, it's in a, a deficit situation here. The bulk of the, of the cobalt is used now in the battery sector here. The growth rate for cobalt is phenomenal. Back in 2008-9, it went to about $50 a pound, and that was mainly driven by the uh, supply shortage coming out of the DRC. Today, it's really the demand for cobalt is really based on actual demand of cobalt coming out of the lithium-ion battery business. So growth rate, phenomenal for cobalt chemicals and uh, uh, refined cobalt for uh, all cobalt. The market is about 100,000 tons per year, and they anticipate it will be over 200,000 tons per year in the short term. Let's see if we can get a slide here. Once again, just a little bit more about the, the batteries. The batteries of choice, the, the LCOs, lithium cobalt oxide batteries for your watches and uh, iPhones. Your, your big batteries for your, uh, your uh, electric vehicles, NMCs and NCAs, that's where the growth is coming into the future here. Whoops. So here's our batteries of, of choice. Um, the LCO has about 6% cobalt by weight uh, in the battery. The NMCs are your Samsungs, your uh, LGs, about 10, 10 to 20 percent cobalt by weight. Uh, this seems to be the battery that's leading the charge here with your electric vehicles also. Your uh, NCA battery is your Panasonic battery about, and Tesla battery. So Peter, I, I am mentioning the word Tesla here. Just so you know, <laughs> we, uh, we do talk to those guys. They are uh, um, uh, in the business, but there's a lot of uh, competition out there for uh, people looking for um, uh, the precursor material, the cobalt material, so we have a, a pretty good audience out there now. About 9-10% to 10 cobalt in those batteries. So we're, we all watch the news and what's going on here, it's just phenomenal, the kind of major battery, major uh, automobile manufacturers and the kind of vehicles and penetration they're going to have in the battery market just in the short term here. Uh, you know, Ford, GM, Audi, Volkswagen, they're all there. Delmar Chrysler, 15 to 25% electric vehicle penetration they're estimating by, uh, by 2025. And even with Tesla, your 500,000 uh, Model 3 cars that they're anticipating, if they can actually make them and if they can actually get the products to make them, there's about uh, 15 kilograms of cobalt per battery for a Model 3 car. So just for those cars in itself, about 7,500 tons of cobalt is going to be required. 
Once again, some of the headlines that are out there, you guys would be aware of, of what's going on here. Uh, Umicore uh, going to be about 600% uh, of the production where they've uh, announced expansions in uh, uh, South Korea and China. Uh, Apple um, making a statement that they're not purchasing any more uh, of the cobalt from the DRC because they don't have a clear supply chain. GM, everybody's in the news, everybody's making uh, the, the vehicles. So where, where's our cobalt coming from? Over 60% comes as a byproduct of copper, 37% uh, from, uh, from nickel. We are a primary cobalt deposit located in the United States. There's only one other uh, primary cobalt deposit in the world that's in production, and it's in Morocco. So I'm gonna start to trying to pick up a little speed here. Um, we all know most of the cobalt comes from the DRC. Primary cobalt production in the US is where we will be. Uh, some comes out of Russia and, and uh, Cuba. This is a, a fairly recent uh, slide that we have from CRU. CRU is uh, assisting us with a transparent marketing report for our feasibility study. The price of, uh, of cobalt for the product we're making, cobalt sulfate heptahydrate, is about $30 plus a pound. It was actually $38 a pound or $33 a pound in, in China. There's about a $5 premium uh, right now from the 99.3 metal, which trades on the uh, LME. So good upside. Now here specifically is our project, which is located in Idaho. We uh, have over $100 million spent on the project. That's an actual photograph of the project. We were just down there last week uh, touring some major, major uh, offtake companies at the property. The mine and mill uh, to, the, to the north here, uh, that's the site. Those tailings waste storage facilities are about uh, 14 acres each. Our water management ponds, about five acres. This is a fully environmentally permitted uh, project at the mine and mill, so we have our record of decision for the plan of operation, and we have our uh, EPA permit for water discharge. Those, those are the big ones. So as we speak, we're completing a, a, a PEA, or, excuse me, a feasibility study to update our PEA. So once again, our feasibility study is uh, underway. We started last year. It is eminent that it's gonna be produced here. I'm going to say, uh, if I, if I tell you what the engineers tell me, I'm, I'm usually wrong, so I'll just say we anticipate having it out uh, first half of this year, which is uh, fast approaching. The, the uh, uh, RAM deposit, which is what the feasibility study will be based on, is, uh, represents only 7% of our claims. Uh, our uh, area that we have on the project is about 2,500 acres, so we do have tremendous room to be able to uh, expand the project. Here's some of the grades on the project here. Very, very high grade uh, cobalt deposit. 800 ton per day, underground mine. Uh, transport up to our, our crusher and our concentrator. We'll produce um, 32 tons of con and we'll ship that con to the south to our uh, cobalt production facility, which is just a fancy name for a uh, um, processing facility where we'll have a hydrometallurgical process to process the, the product into a cobalt sulfate heptahydrate. Once again, this will all be updated in the feasibility study. Just a little bit on our, uh, our drilling of the ram. I think there's about 100 holes into the ram. It's open at both strike extensions and at depth. So we, we always had intended we'd expand the deposit once we get uh, underground. As soon as we had 10 plus years mine life, we stopped drilling and, and started uh, doing our, our uh, studies to see if we could uh, finance this project. The halo just kind of shows, there's our mine workings, our halo just shows that at depth, uh, we, we do have the product and a long strike. There's lots of room to expand on this deposit. Simplified flow sheet, as simple as I can get it. There's uh, uh, probably a lot smarter people in this room here that could go through this, but the bottom line is we will have a uh, cobalt sulfate. We'll produce a copper sulfate, a copper con, magnesium sulfate, and some gold. And this is, this is what kind of sets us aside from anyone else here. Very low carbon footprint, which we talked about earlier in the, in the conference here, the, the, the metal summit about the kind of uh, um, 
uses of the new uh, energy metals out there. In the United States, it used to be extremely low geopolitical risk. Now with our new president down there, I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna work, but he is pro-business, should be very good for us. Clean water discharge, uh, transparent supply chain, so we will be able to um, compete with anyone in the world. And I, I believe at some point in time, we will get a, a, a kind of a, a, a premium for having a product in the United States, but coming out of the gate, we're gonna have to be able to compete with China, which we can. These uh, uh, economics are our PEA economics, so they will all be updated in the next uh, six to eight weeks. What I wanna point out here is the 113 million NPV at a very conservative discount rate. For every dollar, the price of cobalt increases, you increase your NPV by about $18 million. And these numbers were based on 1450 cobalt, which is you know, $25 today, and uh, 1950 cobalt sulfate heptahydrate, and it's uh, about $30 today. So we're, we're looking for a pretty good improvement on those economics. The milestones, I'm gonna flip through fairly quickly because I want to uh, concentrate on our closing here. This is critical to us now. The, uh, the uh, bot deal was closed. We're going to have a feasibility study completed in the, in the next short term. Uh, Micon Engineering is looking after the mining and milling and SNC-Lavalin is looking after the processing. As that is going on and as part of the feasibility study, we did uh, metallurgical drilling last fall. That product was used, is being used by um, SNC-Lavalin and Micon to do confirmatory recovery works for the feasibility study. But the bonus to all this is we're actually making our own product. So we're actually making cobalt sulfate heptahydrate, which is, has been shipped to potential off-takers. They get the product, they can do their own testing on the product. They want more of the product. We can only provide small amounts, kilograms amounts, but that's enough for them to test, go to their clients. Their clients are coming back and saying, this product meets or exceeds all cobalt sulfate that's out in the market, and they do have an interest in pursuing an offtake with us, which I believe is going to be critical to put the, uh, put the whole financing together. So if we can accomplish that by the end of, uh, of this year, I think we'll be ready for uh, construction next year. Um, if you have a, a, a big balance sheet offtaker that comes to the table, um, they will bring uh, senior debt with them because they've, they've vetted your project. We're, we're making some good headroads on that, headways on that. The big key here is that uh, uh, the, the guys want the feasibility study. So that's the key document that we need to get out there. So here's our project, primary high-grade underground cobalt project in the United States. Very small environmental footprint, which is good corporate social responsibility. Uh, Dry stack tailings, half our tails, paste backfill underground, clean water discharge permit with the EPA in place, tremendous upside on the deposit. Lots of other areas that we have looked, we've put drill holes in. Tremendous demand from all of the major auto manufacturers and the, uh, the battery companies. Um, you know, a year ago we were making 25 phone calls and getting one call returned. Today we're getting 25 phone calls, so it's, uh, it's a lot different uh, scenario out there. Ethical sourced, transparent supply, good corporate social responsibility. There are my clocks flashing. That's about as fast as I can go through it, Tracy. <laughs>